The week began as usual, which meant I had to rescue my younger sister, Laura. Ugh, as if I didn't have enough problems. What did she do? What? What did she do now? She took M&Ms without paying for it. Oh, relax. I just forgot. I paid for my sister and was about to tell her off, but Butch saw a cat on the street and... Ah, stop! Oh, hi there. Not a day without an adventure. Press like and I'll tell you what it's like to be Vanessa Pie. That's me. <laughs> Laura had always been a selfish airhead, and that was to be expected. After all, she was the youngest child in the family. Our parents loved us very much and forgave us for all our pranks. Like the time we dyed Butch's fur with watercolors. Well, what can I say? Pink is in trend this season. <laughs> we were happy. But one gloomy evening, everything changed. Mom was a mountain rescuer, and one day, she did not come back from her shift because of a tragic accident. After that, it was just the three of us. Dad started working more to support us. As the elder sister, I had to grow up quickly. I started doing all the housework and taking care of my sister and Butch. However, Laura didn't want to grow up at all. She was lazy and acted spoiled. She also skipped classes and constantly got into trouble. Laura, walk the dog. I need to prepare for a test. I, uh, my nose hurts, <laughs> so I can't. On top of everything else, I visited our grandparents in a nursing home a couple of times a week and listened to their stories. When I was your age. There she goes again. I was so busy I had no time or energy to do anything fun or date. That was why I rejected all the boys. One evening, Dad's phone rang. After a brief conversation, he told me that it was Laura's teacher. She was calling the parents of her students to inform them about the class's upcoming excursion to a neighboring city for the whole weekend. Wow, Dad, can I go? I really want to visit that museum. Of course. Whee! Thanks! Was my sister really that happy because of a visit to a museum? I would sooner believe in the existence of aliens. I grew even more suspicious when I saw Laura put equipment in her backpack. Hmm. The next day, I did a little research at school and found out that Laura and her friends were actually going on a hike in the mountains. Her friend was the one who had called dad and introduced herself as a teacher. You did great. They bought it. Oh, that little liar. She thought she fooled me. I told my dad about it and naturally he lost his temper and scolded Laura in front of her friends. Laura Elizabeth Pye. Have you no shame? I trusted you. You're grounded. Dad got into the car and my sister glared at me. You snitch. I was worried about you. Hiking in the mountains can be dangerous. Or did you forget what happened to mom? I'm so sick and tired of you. Just because you're afraid of living a full life doesn't mean you should smother me. She was an ungrateful, spoiled child. As you can see, we didn't really get along. In the evening, Dad said that he was going on a business trip for a few days and told Laura to listen to me while he was gone. Oh, I had a bad feeling about it. The next day, everyone at school was discussing two new boys. They were brothers and had just moved from Canada. The younger brother, Felix, became Laura's classmate. He was charming and funny. All the girls immediately fell in love with him. Ladies? Oh, what a guy. The elder brother, Brandon, was his complete opposite. He kept to himself and was often rude to the other students. There were also dark rumors about him because of his limp. I heard he got lost in the woods and fought a bear. After spending a week alone, Brandon went crazy. I'd never heard anything so dumb in my life. Of course I didn't believe it, but that arrogant moron was still annoying. I prefer eating alone, got it? Yeah, yeah. Wow, he really did act like a caveman. Someone should teach him some manners. But I had enough things to worry about without adding him to the mix. Doing all the chores by myself was hard. And one evening, I asked Laura for help. But she said that she was going to prepare for a test with her friend. Aren't you wearing too much makeup for a meeting with a friend? That's none of your business. I know, Butch. There's no way in hell she's going to listen to me. There was an abandoned sawmill at the end of our street. I often pass by it when I walk our dog. That evening, I saw someone climb over the fence. Hey, that's Brandon. What is he doing at the abandoned sawmill? I think he's very suspicious too, Butch. Let's go home. It was snowing heavily, but I could still see Laura and Felix by our door. They were kissing? Preparing for a test, huh? She was obviously on a date. Thank you, I had a great time. I made a snowball and threw it at the passionate couple. <sighs> Oops, Laura, your evil sister's here. I better run. Stay away from that heartbreaker. He's hitting on everyone at school. You're just jealous because you don't know how to have fun. Being an older sister isn't easy. I decided to talk to Laura before going to bed. I didn't want us to fight. However, she wasn't in her room. 
I looked at her computer screen and realized she had been chatting with Felix again. He'd invited her to a festival at a ski resort. She sent him a bunch of sad faces and wrote that neither her father nor Miss Bad Booger would let her go. Miss Bad Booger, huh? Get out of my room! What if being boring is infectious? <sighs> Great talk. Damn it. It became noisy at school after the new guys were transferred. For example, I was putting my textbooks in the locker when I heard a commotion. I carefully peeked around the corner and saw Felix and Brandon arguing about something. Brandon was so emotional, he kept waving his hands around and accidentally moved the portrait of our principal. It fell to the floor and out of the frame. Oops, someone's in trouble. Felix quickly took off, but Brandon tried to fix the portrait. Unfortunately, the principal was strolling through the hallway at that moment. He thought Brandon had done it on purpose. You will clean up in the gym as a punishment. Brandon didn't make any excuses and just stuck his tongue out at Mr. Thompson's back. I couldn't stand such an injustice. I tried to convince the principal that the new guy didn't deserve that, but Mr. Thompson just waved me off. I know his reputation. He wants to be seen as a bad guy, and these are the consequences of that. But this conversation is over. God, my dog was smarter than some people. I decided to help Brandon. I would have felt too bad otherwise. When I walked into the gym, I saw something weird. Music was coming from the speakers and lights were dancing on the floor. Brandon was sitting in the center of it all and looking longingly at the empty stands, lost in thought. When he saw me, he growled angrily and ran out of the gym before I could say anything. Not a moment of peace. Well, that seemed like an overreaction. I decided to pretend he didn't exist, but then I broke my promise that very evening. I was walking my dog when I saw Brandon head toward the sawmill again. Hmm. Butch, what do you think he's doing there? You are right. We should find out. I found a hole in the fence and followed Brandon. Wow, I even whistled in surprise when I saw a small skating rink there. Brandon was skating and doing some complex elements. Well, at least he was trying to. He kept falling because of his bad leg. Oh, the poor thing. I wanted to leave before he saw me, but Butch suddenly broke off the leash and ran off. Stop, you brat! I rushed after him and accidentally stepped on the ice. I felt like a spider on skates. Out of the corner of my eye, I saw that Brandon was staring at me with genuine delight. When I was about to fall, he caught me. Uh, <laughs> hi, nice weather, huh? We sat down on a bench and he treated me to hot cocoa from his thermos. I asked him why he was skating there in secret. Well, when we were still living in Canada, my brother and I both did figure skating. I loved it, but I got injured during practice. Holy heck, who could have thought? Brandon said that he really missed it. He had been thinking about the past when I caught him listening to music in the gym. He'd built that rink himself and skated there alone since he was self-conscious about his limp. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm not as good as I used to be, but you know what? You look amazing on the ice. Oh, I got an idea. There's going to be a skating competition among amateurs at the ski resort soon. I could coach you. Vanessa Pye, the queen of ice? Oh, it could be dangerous. I hesitated, but promised to think about it because Brandon seemed really enthusiastic. If you don't mind me asking, why did you fight with Felix at school? Brandon didn't look me in the eyes when he said that his brother was also planning to take part in that competition. Felix had apparently stopped practicing and only thought about having fun and dating. Skating could be dangerous if you weren't careful about it. I believed Brandon, but still felt like he was hiding something from me. Hmm. <sighs> I spent the whole night thinking about it all and eventually decided not to risk it. In the morning, I went to the nursing home. I thought my grandma would be knitting in a chair and grandpa would be snoring in front of the TV as usual. To my surprise, they were having a snowball fight, <laughs> making snow angels and laughing like children. <laughs> Are you crazy? You'll catch a cold. What if your back cramps up? Their reaction surprised me. They looked at each other and said that I was acting like an old lady. Baby, life is passing you by while you're being careful. Having a dull life is worse than catching a cold. Be brave and say yes to adventures. Their words shocked me. I realized I had been hiding in a cocoon ever since mom died. Was it time to stop running away from life? When I got home, the first thing I did was call Brandon. Is your offer still on the table? Are you serious? Yes, a million times yes. We started to spend a lot of time together. After classes, we went to the ice rink and he taught me everything he knew. After I grew a bit more confident, Brandon started to teach me the program he had come up with. He had got injured before he could skate. If the day was particularly cold, we would stay in Brandon's room and he would show me his costumes and awards. I quickly fell in love with figure skating and Brandon. I also realized that I had been so strict with Laura because I had been trying to replace our mother. Could it be that 
Laura needed an understanding sister more? I'm sorry I forbade you from dating Felix, and I also have a surprise for you. I know that he invited you to the festival. I talked to dad, and he said we can go, especially since I'm going to be competing there. <gasps> You're so cool, sis! Laura apologized for acting like a child and promised to do her share of chores. Everything would have been great, but when her boyfriend found out that I was going to skate Brandon's program, he grimaced and tried to change my mind. I wouldn't do it if I were you. That's how my brother got injured. The old me would have listened to him, but I had become the best version of myself and wasn't afraid of anything now. Let's hope you don't regret your decision. Soon, we came to the resort together. We went skiing and drank hot chocolate by the fireplace. I couldn't remember the last time I had so much fun. The day of the competition came. I was getting ready to skate when Felix came up to me. I'm sorry, but you need to know the truth. Look, he showed me a video of Brandon skating and falling awkwardly on the skating rink by the sawmill. What's this? My brother gets shy because he can't skate like he used to, you know? I filmed and blackmailed him. Uh, what? Why? Felix said that he really wanted Laura to come to the resort with him, but our dad would only let her come if I was with her. I promised I wouldn't show the video to anyone if Brandon coached and invited you here. I know what I did was bad, but my brother isn't as good as you think either. He tricked you. Oh, I couldn't believe what I was hearing. It couldn't be true. My new worldview was based on a lie. It made my blood boil. I couldn't help but slap Brandon. You jerk. Vanessa, what's wrong? What's wrong is I fell in love with a liar. I don't want to see you again. I refused to skate and decided to leave. My sister and Brandon tried to stop me, confused. What are you talking about, Vanessa? But then, it was Felix's turn to perform. Music started to play, and we all stared at him, dumbfounded. He, he, he was skating Brandon's program. The truth hit me like a huge snowball. I realized why Felix hadn't wanted me to perform. He didn't want us to skate the same program. Oh, that bastard. What an arrogant jerk. Unlike me, Brandon looked worried. I soon realized why. Felix hadn't practiced in a while and wasn't prepared to skate such a complex program. As a result, I fell. Oh, 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 it hurts. Felix was groaning and clutching his bruised knee. Laura gasped in fear and ran up to him. That's how she found out that she wasn't her boyfriend's only girlfriend. A whole crowd of girls ran onto the ice. Unfortunately, I was right. He turned out to be quite a playboy. Who, who are they? Baby, I can explain. They mean nothing to me. I only love you. I see you only date beauties. Doesn't it bother you that you're a creepy monster yourself? Goodbye, we're done. I was glad that my sister was able to show him his place. Meanwhile, I had to explain my behavior to Brandon. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have slapped you. I should have told you right away that Felix was trying to blackmail me so that you'd come here. That's why we fought at school. I refused to do what he asked me to do. But when I saw how elegantly and easily you skated, I realized that I wanted to coach you. Thank you for showing me that I should step out of my comfort zone. I decided to skate after all. After all, I had been practicing for so long to do it. Brandon came up to me and suddenly kissed me. It's for good luck. And Vanessa, I'm in love with you too. Oh, how? I felt butterflies in my stomach. I skated even better than I had hoped. When the audience started cheering, I told Brandon to come bow with me. After all, he was my coach and the author of the program. That's my story. Inspiring, right? Brandon realized that he didn't have to say goodbye to sports. Now, he dreams of becoming a coach. We spend a lot of time together. Laura helps me with the chores now. I've become bolder since I realized I shouldn't hide from life. And if life throws me lemons, well, I'll make lemonade. <laughs> But just wondering what the riskiest thing you ever did was? Tell us in the comments down below.